Hey, how's it going guys? Today I'm going to be taking you through another Karo Khan game since I see that a lot of you have been enjoying my Karo Khan game reviews. It's an opening that I absolutely love playing. So today I'm going to take you through one that I literally played like 10 minutes ago. And I was like, that was a crazy game. Let's record a video. So obviously we have a Karo Khan. And my opponent plays this Bishop C4 line, which I do see occasionally. Um, the hillbilly, where you just give up the pawn here to get the bishop on this uh, open diagonal, right? And then queen h5. Um, previously, when I've played against this, I've played e6. But from reviewing those games, I've seen that g6 is the better option uh, to attack the queen. And like I can then feed in Keto my bishop. That's about as far... As I've analysed that, but that's kind of how learning learning an opening works. You know, you play an opening, you know, the Cairo Khan. Then your opponent plays some weird gambit against it, and you know, say you see this position for the first time, maybe you play e6 or knight h6 to defend the pawn, and then you look in the game review and then go, ah, no, g6 is the best move, and then you learn from there right so if you see this g6 is the move my opponent goes queen h4 i was expecting queen to e5 to attack my rook and my pawn but he goes to h4 to attack the pawn instead i go knight f6 i i, I don't know anything from here by the way it's just i thought hey my knight defends the pawn f playing the pawn to f5 is going to be too weakening so we're going to do it like this and I'm happy to give the pawn up eventually. Right, I know I'm going to give it up. But while my opponent's busy trying to take it, I'm going to get some development in. So, bishop f5 develops and defends the pawn. I saw h3, preparing g4. And I initially wanted to go h5. But then realised after g4, I can't take because the rook's undefended. Which kind of threw a bit of a spanner in the works. But I played bishop g7. Just developing, and I know I'm going to get kicked out, but it also, with a pawn on g4, cuts the queen's attack off from the pawn. So I was okay with this, and I kind of wished that I'd gone back to c8 so I could bring the knight to d7, but the computer thinks d7 is the better square. My opponent plays a knight g to e2, preparing to go to g3 to attack the pawn, and I play e6. The whole time, the computer wants moves like g5, which I just don't understand. Like, why would g5 be a good move? And then I castle. Like, what? Come on, okay, maybe, maybe not in this position, but previously it really wanted g5. Um, I think here, it likes g5. I mean, come on. Really? I, 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 I suppose, but like, why? Why Why would you want to do that? So anyway, I play e6. My opponent plays knight g3, attacking the pawn. And I just castle. I'm like, look, bro. Just, just take the pawn. I In all this time you spent trying to get the pawn back, I've fianchettoed my bishop. I've got most of my minor pieces out, and I'm castled. And you haven't done those things. So he goes g5 to attack my knight. I move my knight. And he takes on e4. And here I play a5. With the intention of chasing down this bishop. Um, and I mean I'm, I'm threatening to say do this. Where I force him to take my knight. And then I get to take with the e pawn and open this bishop back up. Which is what I wanted right. My opponent instead plays a3. So that I can't do that. And I could advance the pawn to a4. But I decide against it, and I go e5, which prevents my opponent bringing his pawn to d4. Also opens my bishop up, so I want to put the bishop on e6 and the knight on d7, because I am worried about moves like knight here. Now that can't be played yet, because my knight controls the square. But I'm worried about something like this, where I have to take. And you know, there's ideas of the queen sneaking in and mating me. If I can't put enough pressure on this pawn. 
And that's the reason I played e5, so that I can move my bishop and get my knight to d7 to lend further support to f6, so that ideas of bishop takes knight, pawn takes knight, and knight f6 no longer work. So, you know, you see the move e5 and you're like, computer says it's a bad move, it's a bad move. But the logic behind it makes a lot of sense, right? The computer can just say it's a bad move, and then you automatically go, okay, bad move. What was I thinking? How stupid of me? Or if you're looking at, like, my game, oh, how stupid of him? How could he play e5? That's such a terrible move. But when I explain the logic, it makes a lot of sense, right? Don't just take the computer at its word. So my opponent goes d3. Sorry, a little rant over, right? He just opens his bishop up. I play bishop e6, going along with my plan to free up d7. He goes bishop to d2. I go knight d7. And here I'm very happy. Because f6 is controlled by four different pieces. And my bishops are looking quite nice. If my opponent castles kingside, his kingside pawns are really weak, right? And if he goes queenside, because I've already played a5 and induced a3, I've got a hook, right? And I can throw these pawns forward and like kind of collide with this pawn to open lines up. And he does castle queenside, which surprised me. And I went b5. My opponent played rook d to f1. And here, <clears throat> I probably should have played a4 to lock this pawn in place before I played b4. Instead, I played b4 straight away, which allows a4. Whereas if I'd have gone a4, then b4, my opponent wouldn't be able to go to a4 to lock the position up. But I find the move I was really happy with here. And um, try and find, well, I don't know. It's an odd move. It's a knight f4. My thinking is, if bishop takes, then I take back with the knight. The knight is now going to end up on d4. And a4 is weak. My opponent will have to play b3 to shore the pawn up. And then the dart squares become very weak, right? And maybe I can throw the pawn down to c4 or manufacture some kind of sacrifice on the light squares, and now the light square bishop is gone. Instead, my opponent takes on f4, right? And instead of, I, I, I can take back, which comes with an attack on the knight. After queen here, I can do this. But instead, I take there first. Because if we do this, we get the same thing, right? And my bishop is a monster on this diagonal, and I'm down a pawn. But this pawn structure is ruined, and my bishop is a monster. And because I position my pieces like this, my opponent can't put a knight on f6 to block the diagonal up. So I was happy if we went into that, which would be the same, right? So knight here, bishop takes, bishop takes knight, bishop takes here, uh, there, there, there. This position is the same as if um, my opponent takes here and then I take here and then we get this, right? Same position. But the reason, the reason that instead of forcing the line that I showed, I instead give my, uh, my opponent an option. I give my opponent the option of saving his bishop. Because he could take me, and then I take, and then takes, and we get the same position. But I give my opponent the choice. I'm like, bro, how about you save your bishop and keep this diagonal closed from my bishop? And he goes, okay. And then I take on a4, which was the point of giving him the option. You know, I could have just played a forcing line. And I would have gotten a good position. But instead, I can play a line where my opponent has a choice. And we can, either, we can either get the same position, which I'm happy with, or my opponent can make the decision to bring his bishop back instead of taking mine and let me take on a4. And now once this bishop retreats, I can throw this pawn down the board. And my opponent's king queen side, sorry, is looking really weak. My opponent plays queen g4, which I thought was a really good move because it means that his h-pawn can run down the board now. 
And it also kind of stops my queen from moving too far because my knight will be hanging. So I go c5 with the idea of playing c4 to open up some more lines. My opponent goes h4. I go c4. If my opponent does this, then I'm just going to attack the pawn, right? Instead, my opponent plays h5. He just wants to come at me straight away. But I wasn't really scared because... You know, if my opponent does something like this, I can probably just do this in some cases. Now, here it's losing, but there are ideas of when the pawn takes, just hiding my king. And this is called an umbrella pawn, where my opponent would love for it to be gone, and his attack would be winning. And if it was my pawn, his attack would be winning, but because it's his pawn, he can't take it. And it provides really good shelter my king. So I wasn't really scared. My opponent takes back. I give a check. The king goes to b1. And here, I know you guys can see the computer analysis. I'm going to turn the lines off for a minute. Hopefully didn't look at them too long. But here, what, what would you play? Most of you would probably say queen c2 king moves and then what because if you take on d3 you don't actually have anything right and your opponent's crashing through and the computer will show you that this is a tough position this is zeros now this is technically a draw although i can't see this position petering out to a draw Instead, I play bishop c2 check. The point of bishop c2 check is if the king moves here, right, then, I mean, we get a bit of a windmill and we force the king to the center. Then we bring our queen in and this king is really struggling, right? So the king has to instead go to a1. But the reason that this position is better than this position, right? Look, this is the same position, except the king, the queen and the bishop are in different places. The reason this is a lot better is because of queen c6. And because the bishop went there, this route is now open for the queen to attack. And the king has no way out. Even if it goes to a2, it can't escape this way. The bishop does a great job of cutting it off. So my opponent plays the move I was expecting, b3, which means that I can't play queen to a4 check anymore, and I have to take it. And this also allows um, the king to move to b1, now that the bishop has stepped off of c2. And here my opponent plays um, king to b2 to attack my bishop, and... <laughs> In with five seconds on my clock, I miss mating two. Um, I just retreat the bishop and attack the queen because I have low time. My opponent puts the queen on d1 to prevent my queen going to a4. I instead bring my queen to d5 with the idea of setting up mate threats. My opponent plays h6, and here I have mate with pawn to b3 which I miss again because I've got four seconds I just play bishop h8 I know I'm winning anyway and I you know I've, I've got really low time so I just try and play it safe by retreating the bishop and just you know I I don't want to have to calculate a mating sequence I just want to play quickly and know that I'm doing the right thing you know, I played this game literally like 10 minutes ago, so I know that my plan was to advance the pawns, which I thought was a really safe bet, because after h6 there is no attack on the king side because the pawns are all locked up. And here my opponent actually ran out of time, but as you can see the position is completely winning, because my queen and bishop are just so strong, and if this knight ever moves then I'm playing e4 to open this diagonal up. And that was the game. And I think it shows again that the Karo Khan 
is not the boring opening that people often attribute to it. You know, there's some wild stuff that happened in this game, like opposite side castle in, pawns flying down the board, blunders absolutely everywhere. Like, if we go to the game review, I mean, I had one mistake, five misses, and a blunder. My opponent had eight mistakes, one miss, and a blunder. And we're rated pretty high. Like, we're pretty high rated. <clears throat> I was really happy with this knight f4 move. And with taking on b3, rather than taking Kia. And then the overall attack, I mean, I was very pleased with. Especially this bishop to c2 check move. And the idea to get my queen in here. And although I missed forced mate in this position... <laughs> And in this position, you know, I still win because of the time situation. And I'm completely winning anyway. I'm up two pawns and my opponent's king is going to die once I manage to see a mate. But yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you stuck around to the end of the video, please drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. We're a small channel. Well, I'm a small channel. There's only me. Um, I'd like to, you know, reach some new faces if possible. So you subscribing would be a massive help. And please comment if there's any type of videos that you'd like to see in the future. With that said, have a good day.